GameRanks presents 10 of the best things for gamers at CES 2016. The Consumer Electronics Show isn't completely for gamers, but we tried to round up some things that might actually interest you guys, so let's get started off with number 10. Check out this 4D gaming chair thing called Immersit. What makes Immersit interesting is that you don't actually have to buy a physical chair or couch that moves around and is motorized. You actually just buy this platform and put it underneath your chair or couch or whatever you're sitting on and it does the moving for you. It's still probably gonna be very expensive but nowhere near as expensive as buying an actual motorized chair. And that's pretty cool because you can have the thing actually move around and make it feel like you're really watching a movie or potentially playing a game. If VR gaming does actually become a big thing, moving chairs is is only gonna take it to the next level, and that's why I thought the Immersit was pretty interesting. This thing actually made an even bigger splash at last CES from 2015, but it seems like this time around they've really got their shit together, and it's hopefully releasing at the end of 2016. And at number nine, something very cool going around on the show floor at the convention was putting people's faces in Fallout 4. Shout out to The Verge for picking this up first. A company using an HP tablet with special Intel cameras can scan your head instantaneously and upload it and render it and almost instantaneously mod it into the game. This whole process from scanning the face to rendering it to uploading it into the game took like under 20 minutes and it was totally awesome. And judging from pictures of people who scan their faces into the game, it doesn't look so bad. It's not the highest resolution, but it doesn't look awkward. It's it certainly doesn't look as bad as when you scan your face into one of the 2K games or Rainbow Six Vegas. And at number 8 we have the $99 Windows 10 Pocket PC called Kangaroo. This portable little PC is about the size of a cell phone and it fits in your pocket and it's got a bunch of external ports that allow you to do a lot of different things with it. You can connect it to an external monitor because it has HDMI. It's also got micro SD, micro USB, USB 2.0, 3.0, and with an app you can actually use your iPhone or iPad as an external monitor. I feel like further down the line this type of thing is going to provide a lot of capability for just weird little tricks that we can do. This thing of course isn't the most powerful, it has a small Intel processor are usually found in tablets, and it's got 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. I can't necessarily completely apply this to gaming right now, but I, like I said, I think further down the line this could be something very cool. Especially for people who play video games like me who like to tweak around with new gadgets and innovations and stuff. And at number 7, Razer has announced a lot of new stuff this year, including the Razer Stargazer. This is a pretty impressive webcam that is capitalizing on all the people who want to be streamers and YouTubers these days. The camera is $200, but the capture rate is 720p at 60 frames per second, or 1080p at 30 frames per second. That's pretty damn good benchmarks for a webcam. What is pretty cool, and is going to be pretty nice for people who don't have certain advantages, is the fact that this camera has built-in software that can find you and outline you and place you instead of using an actual green screen. The camera will actually cut you out and place you over overlay over your gameplay footage. All without big expensive green screen setups and lighting kits and stuff like that. It seems to work pretty good judging from the tests I've seen out there and this could be a potential game changer for consumer streamer stuff. Razer has been trying to capture this market for a while with streamer related microphones and stuff like that so this webcam is no surprise but I'd say definitely keep an eye on it. And at number six, because I feel like we bring it up every year at CES, LG still has this flexible display that they're still working on. And I brought it up again because I think the potential here is really awesome. You basically could get a roll-up portable screen. This rollable display is an 18-inch sheet of material. And honestly, companies like LG and Samsung still say this tech is pretty far down the line, but I just really like the potential of it. And every year when they show it off, they do show it off like every year now, but it seems to get better and better every time. And that's totally the future. And I would love to just roll up a screen and bring it with me and I could just play games wherever I want. And at number five, here's another weird kind of stupid thing. This 360 degree camera is called the Alley, and it's got front and back sensors that can make 360 degree video. This video you can of course upload immediately to Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that, and it's also gonna have live stream functionality. In terms of YouTube and video games and stuff like that, I feel like people could really innovate with this. Maybe in some weird way of streaming an AR or virtual reality game, or maybe eventually we can get FMV type games like point and click adventures where you actually have to navigate a 3D recorded space. I don't know, maybe I'm grasping it straws, but I still think this is really cool tech. I like 360 degree video a lot. And at number four, we have Razer's first Ultrabook. This is a gaming focused Ultrabook that is affordable compared to their other options at only $1,000 and it's called the Razer Blade Stealth. It's only half an inch thick and it weighs less than three pounds. That being said, since it is Razer, it is rocking an i7, a pretty high quality screen, and of course all the flashy touches that Razer PCs always have. What's cool is that Razer is also diving into the external graphics card core thing with what they are calling the core. This external desktop's graphics card enclosure is a device that allows you to put a graphics card in it, leave it on your desk, and 
and anytime you want to throw down your laptop, plug it into this bad boy and it'll turn into a beast. And the coolest part is that you just connect it via USB type C. Pretty amazing. Other companies have been playing around with this tech. We'll get to it later in this video, but I still think it's really cool that Razer is diving in because maybe it'll really start to be a mainstream thing. So I think this is going to be a good thing in terms of whatever your situation is as a gamer. Maybe you're in college and you're running around with your laptop a lot and you don't need a powerful laptop until you actually sit at home, plug it in on your desk, and then you want to utilize the Beast Core graphics card thing. There's a variety of different situations it could be used and the potential is really there. I think it's cool. And at number three, Alienware has announced the first OLED gaming laptop. For those of you that don't know, OLED is a really good quality screen that has a few different advantages over LCD, including the lowest latency, no need for a backlight, and especially with this Alienware one, they're claiming that it has a millisecond response time. So this is gonna be a really advanced screen with deep blacks, amazing pixel density, and just general overall efficiency. Laptop screens and gaming laptop screens have really been lagging behind lately compared to some more impressive 4K desktop monitors, so it's really cool to see Alienware catching up with this. Otherwise, this Alienware 13 laptop is pretty much identical to its counterparts, except for the fact that now it has a badass screen. And at number two, Asus has announced a bunch of new Republic of Gaming stuff that we're pretty impressed with. Asus's Republic of Gamers line has always been targeted for custom PC gaming enthusiasts and stuff like that. At CES, they revealed the ROG GT51 gaming desktop, an Intel i7 based PC that comes with either one or two NVIDIA Titan X cards. They're really cool, really nice looking, and really powerful if you don't like custom building your machine. They also announced some pretty impressive 24 and 28 inch 4K displays, and as well as a new version of their own external desktop graphics card base station. The the ROG XG Station 2 is like the Razer Core, a station that allows players with laptops to plug it into and access some really powerful graphics. This external docking station can make your laptop really powerful and it'll charge your computer at the same time. I'm just really into these things. And at number one, since we have been on the VR hype train lately, let's talk about the newest version of the HTC Vive. This is the HTC Vive Pre. The HTC Vive was originally supposed to release at the very end of 2015, but it has been pushed until almost the spring because of some new innovations and improvements. Most notably, the fact that now it has a built-in outward facing camera. This is very cool because with this little built-in camera, you can now access the outside world without having to take your headset off. So basically you never really totally need to leave the virtual world. Of course, other than just seeing out of your goggles without taking them off, this can also add to new augmented reality games and software features and just kind of weird virtual reality stuff. I think it's very cool. I really like where it's going. It seems like it has some great innovations, but I really expect it to be up there in terms of Oculus Rift pricing. So basically VR is gonna be a fortune for now, but it's fun to speculate and enjoy all the cool futuristic tech. Am I right? So guys, those are some of the coolest things we saw at CES that can at least be kind of gamer focused. Have you been following the CES coverage like we have? Let us know in the comments some really cool stuff that you've seen. We wanna know, we wanna talk about it, we love tech. If you did have a good time with this video, click the like button, cause that's the best way you can help us out. And subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.